If you're watching this, I'm sure you've heard the words high value man, high value woman, soft life, hard wig soft life. If you know, you know. If you've been living under a rock, or if you are an older millennial or Gen X or boomer or something like that, and you haven't heard those terms, no offense, let me enlighten you a little bit. According to the internet, soft life is luxury. It's taking expensive vacations. It's going shopping whenever you want. Um, going to fancy dinners. It's having unlimited self-care and not the mental, you know, self-care, but like going to get your nails done all the time, facials, uh, spa retreats, all the things. It's basically luxury. That's what the soft life is, according to the internet. And the way you get the soft life, according to the internet, is by having a high value man. And what is a high value man? Well, basically, according to the internet, a high value man is a guy that makes more than six figures. At least that's the thing that's given the most emphasis. He's rich. He likes to spoil you. He likes to take you on those fancy trips. He likes to pay for that fancy dinner. He likes to pay for all the spa retreats, etc., etc. And how do you get a high value man? Well, I'm glad you asked. Well, since you attract what you are, you have to be a high value woman. And what does a high value woman mean, according to the internet? Well, Basically, you just have to be really pretty. A high value woman takes care of herself on the outside. She's put together from head to toe. There's not one hair out of place. There's never any lipstick on her teeth. She wears floral gowns and a hair flowing in the wind as she sits on a fancy blanket in the park having a picnic with all of her best friends. She prances off into the sunset. She's living the life. A high value woman is beautiful, according to the internet. I know this personally because I've watched a ton of femininity content that talks about how to be a high value woman and how to level up, how to glow up. If you search glow up right now on YouTube, majority of the content will be about how to physically glow up on the outside. There's rarely any content about how to glow up on the inside, but actually I made a video about how to spiritually glow up, so I'll have that linked here. Shameless plug. But anyway, I'm just here to say that lately God has been revealing to me that all of that is so false. He's been showing me what it means for me to be his daughter. So that means the femininity videos and all the tips and tricks that I've been learning. I could just throw them out the window and you can too. Because if you are somebody that claims to be a follower of Christ, if you put your hope and trust in Jesus Christ, none of that means anything because it is all according to the world's standards. Where in the Bible does it talk about a woman's value coming from her outer beauty? Or a man's value coming from the amount of money he makes. The Bible that I've read, it talks about somebody's character, what's on the inside. But I'm not going to lie. The reason I watched those videos to begin with is because I was influenced. In the past, I'll be honest, I never really was that interested in dating a guy specifically for his money. But lately, I've been influenced from on and offline sources to find a guy that makes a lot of money. While that wasn't my number one priority, it definitely sat high up on the list. My number one priority has always been for a guy to love Jesus. But recently I found myself going out on dates with guys specifically because they were rich. And honestly, a big reason why I wanted to find a high value man to begin with is because I didn't want to work anymore. I was tired of going to my 9 to 5. And honestly, if you watch a lot of these videos, the reason why a lot of women want to have the soft life and find a high value man is because they don't want to work anymore. And I'll touch on that a little bit later. But for now, I will say the reason I wanted to find that high value rich guy essentially is because I didn't want to work a typical nine to five anymore. Everybody loves the Proverbs 31 woman, but if you actually look and read it, she works. She doesn't just have a husband that potentially makes money. We don't know whether or not he makes a lot of money, but she works. And I do want to say, I do believe that working can also mean working in the house. If you are a stay-at-home mom or if you desire to be a stay-at-home mom, I think there's nothing wrong with that. What I'm specifically talking about is defining the soft life as literally doing nothing except for consuming, consuming luxury, consuming television, consuming idleness, essentially, like not really doing anything of purpose in life except for just experiencing things. There's nothing wrong with experiencing things or consuming things here and there, but that's not what we were designed to do. Again, if you take out Proverbs 31 and you even go back to the beginning in Genesis, they were working in the garden. Yes, Adam was working in the garden and then Eve was made to be his helper. Helping can look like a lot of different things. It can be working around the house. It can be working outside of the house. It can be a combination of both. But either way, we were not made to sit and be idle. Another story a lot of people like to bring up is Boaz and Ruth. 
And that one, I understand he, yes, he takes care of her. It is reasonable to conclude that he is rich because he does have land. He also has enough money to just drop to buy the other land to be her kinsman redeemer. So I get, I get that. Something that I feel like God has recently dropped in my heart is who gave Boaz that land? Who brought down rain for the crops to even grow? Who created the field? Who created this earth? You get what I'm getting at. The God who created this earth, who created that field, who created the crops, who gave it to Boaz, he's the same God that I worship. So if he can give Boaz land, why couldn't he give it to me? Why do I need to go through a middleman in order to get God's blessings? I realized that when I was thinking about different guys that I was trying to go out with and I was only really going out with them because they were rich, if I'm being completely honest. And then God was just like, Crystal, why are you trying to seek provision from a man when you can come to me? Am I not your provider? Am I not the one giving you food every day, putting a roof over your head? Like, just like I've given these rich guys money from whatever their source of income is. I was going out with a lot of engineers, if I'm being honest. (laughs) And he's like, if I'm giving them income, why can't I provide you with income? Why do you have such limited faith in me to not think that I'd be able to provide for you just like I provide for them? And I was just like, whoa, okay, mind blown. You got me there. So I don't need the middleman. I've got the man. I've, oh, wow. I've got God. I've got Jesus. So I don't need a middleman. And this is not to say that I don't want to get married or I don't need a man. That's not what I'm saying. Stick with me for the rest of the video. I will conclude it perfectly. What I'm saying is I don't need to look to a man or a spouse to be able to pay my bills, to be able to take me on a vacation, to be able to do the things that cost money in this world, which is basically everything nowadays. But yeah, I don't need a guy to provide for me because God does that. I recently posted a vlog talking about how I quit my nine to five job so that I could become a background singer for a Christian artist. And while the singing gig has been great, I did talk about it a little bit at the end of that vlog, but it is gig work. So I'm only paid if I do a show and that's if they ask me back, etc. So I have to trust God that he's going to bring me opportunities to be able to do singing work or that he's going to bring me opportunities to do copywriting. I do freelance copywriting also. So like I have to trust God with that. In this season, He has really been testing me and making himself known to me like, I am your provider. I'm not going to let some man come in and take credit for providing for my daughter. Which if he were to bring a spouse right now to pay all my bills and do whatever, that still would be credit to him, him being God. But my past self, I didn't have that knowledge to think that way previously. Like when I was married, any income that came in from my then husband I credit it to him. I didn't think of it as like God providing for us, which is, I feel like that's just wild that I didn't think of it that way back then. But, but hey, you live and you learn. And if you're confused about the fact that I was married once, yes, I was. I have a video talking about my testimony and all that happened there. But in short, I was married. He cheated multiple times, actually. And now I'm not married. That's the short version. And if you want, you can watch the video where I talk about my testimony, how God brought me through that hard season and many other ones, and how he's been good and faithful to me through every season of my life, even when it seems like he's not there. Which brings me back to my point now, even in this season where I don't have a traditional nine to five, God's still providing for me. I'm not out on the streets and I have nobody else to credit for that except for God. But going back to a high value man, I feel like all of the content that I've seen about high value men It just talks about how much money they make and it never talks about their character. It never talks about, let me not say never, it rarely talks about their character and how they treat you, their love for Jesus. Also, a lot of this content isn't necessarily made by Christians, so so I can't really fault them for that. But I'm a Christian, I believe in Jesus, I follow him. And so the number one thing I want my future husband to have is a relationship with God and not just like, and not just like a, oh, I believe in God type of thing. Like, no, I want you to be following Christ with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Like, I want you to love God more than you love me. If you don't love God more than you love me, what are you doing? Don't waste my time. Because out of your overflow of love for God, 
it will spill over to how you treat your wife and your kids and the people around you. So I need to see the fruits of the spirit in you. Like, I don't care how much money you make. Actually, I do. I'm not going to lie. I do care about how much money, but you don't have to be rich. That's the thing I'm trying to get at. Like, you can have a good heart and good soul and good character and love Jesus with all your heart, mind, and soul and make an average salary. Average that's subjective, you know, like six figures could be average for somebody and, you know, 50K could be average for someone. That part is figure outable. What I'm saying is I want to be in a relationship, marriage with a man who loves Jesus more than he loves me. And I'm seeing the fruits of the spirit and how he treats people around him, how he carries himself, how he has self-discipline because self-discipline is a fruit of the spirit. And usually if you got pretty good self-discipline, you might be making a decent amount of money. You're not going to be on the streets, ideally. I mean, everybody has a story. You end up in different situations for different reasons. But typically, if you have good self-discipline, you're probably not going to end up on the streets. But anyway, I say all that to say, I feel like there have not been a lot of videos or content talking about a high-value man being because of his relationship with Christ and his character in the inner parts of him. Secondly. Or I don't know, thirdly, whatever number I'm on, I don't even think I'm counting. But either way, the next thing is high value women. Oh man, I just feel like, okay, because I consumed more of those videos than the high value man stuff. Like, I'm not trying to be a high value man. So, but I was watching a ton of femininity content that was all geared towards how to go up to be a high value woman. And when I tell you, majority of that content, was talking about how to dress, how to make your hair better, longer, how to clear your skin, how to fake it even, like how to do all this stuff for cheap so that you can appear to be rich, so you can be on the same level as that high value man and snag him or whatever. Like that's what a lot of that content was. Occasionally some of the content would talk about like, oh, you have to carry yourself in this way. Don't be loud and obnoxious, that sort of thing. But again, it never really talked about what was in somebody's heart. It's not until recently, actually, when I've seen a few different women talk about biblical femininity. I think I can only think of like two. Maybe there's more out there. I don't know. But I've personally only seen like two different videos on it. And I just don't think it's talked about enough, unfortunately. And yes, I know I'm a fairly new YouTuber. And, and currently, I don't have like a ton of subscribers. And who knows who's even going to see this. But I just feel like I should put this out into the interwebs. Everybody else is putting their two cents on it. I felt like God called me to say mine. So here we are. But anyway, I digress. I can say that I have either been in the talking stages or actually in a relationship with somebody since I was 15, 16 years old with no breaks. And now I'm 29. I will say I've been single for about a year or so now. And the amount of things I've been learning and the things that God has been teaching me alone, like alone as in being single, is just amazing. For example, I recently realized that I don't like straight hair on me, at least. I have been straightening my hair. I think when I was a child, I was, you know, my mom did my hair, she straightened it or whatever. But then I had my natural hair awakening in high school. And I was like, I'm just gonna wear my hair natural all the time. Love it. And that's what I did. And then when I was 19, I met my now ex-husband and he liked it straight. So I was straightening my hair. And then we were married for a number of years, whatever. And then when we split, finally, when I was 26 years old, so from 19 to 26 years old, being with somebody that liked my hair a certain way, there was some time in there where I did wear my hair natural, but he made it very clear that he did not like that. But anyway, being with somebody that was very vocal about their preference on how I looked definitely did something to my psyche. Thankfully, God has reversed that. And then after that, dating someone who also had preferences but you know it was less extreme and I'm actually not even going to talk crap about that guy because he was really nice I say all that to say it wasn't until after I had this last breakup about a year ago and I think it was when I uh yes this is when it happened when I was transitioning into doing music full-time or you know gig work <laughs> um I was thinking about it, it was like, if I ever made it as a full-time musician, like, what do I want my branding to be like? And then I had a flashback, God brought back to my memory, a time when I was, like, in early college, and I wanted to be a country singer at that point. I know, 
crazy. Before being a black country singer was popular, I wanted to do that. Wow, that sounded so pick me. Anyway, I can literally remember drawing out on a sheet of paper like what I wanted my like costume to be for whenever I would do shows, hypothetically, because I never did any country shows. But anyway, I remember drawing myself with big curly hair and I had a white lace dress on. That was like the vibe I wanted to go for. And like I said, fast forward, I ended up with somebody that wanted my hair straight and wanted me to look a certain way. So I changed and altered my appearance for that person. And now having the opportunity to get into the music industry, I thought about it and I was like, I don't want the world to know me as straight hair crystal. That's not how God made me. He never made me with straight hair. Like I will never have naturally straight hair. And plus, I like the way curly hair looks on me. So why not wear curly hair? Why not wear natural hair? And if you're somebody that has naturally curly or kinky hair and you like to straighten it, get it, you know, relax, whatever, like I'm not trying to like shame you or anything like that. I'm just saying for me, I personally like natural curls, kinks and all that. Like I like the way that looks. And also I like the idea of embracing the way that God made me. And so in this season, I'm finally like, why not embrace it? I'm single. No one is here to tell me otherwise and tell me like, no, you can't do that. And honestly, I want to be with somebody that likes me for the way I present myself now. Like, like, imagine if I had this realization while I was already in a relationship and somebody's like, well, I met you with straight hair and now you all of a sudden want to change your hair to kinky curly. They should love you no matter what and love you for what's on the inside. But at the same time, like, give them a realistic picture of what they're getting, if that makes sense. But anyway, that's just one of the things that God has been showing me. Like, I am enough in the way that he made me. When it comes to things that I can't change, such as my hair or my complexion or different quirks about me, like God made me this way. And I also had the realization too that me changing my appearance and changing myself for a guy is a really bad idea. Not only because I'm denying the way that God made me, I'm also assuming that God's going to provide a husband for me, which next point, a lot of you may not like it. I understand, but cry about it. God does not promise you a husband. I've said it. I said it. God does not promise us husbands, no matter how much we want to get married. I know a lot of people like to quote the scripture in the Bible where it says he gives you the desires of your heart. What they're also failing to see is that God changes your desires the more you become like him. So the more you're in your word, you're praying, you're getting to know God and becoming more like Jesus, you're going to have the desires that he wants for you. And it is very possible that he doesn't want you to get married. I'm not saying that it is the case. I'm not trying to discourage you or anything like that. I'm literally just saying that it's possible that he may not want you to get married. Just like Paul had a thorn in his side that he so badly want removed, God never removed it. So it's not promised that he's going to give us husbands. I didn't sign up for the prosperity gospel. God is not a genie. You can't just rub him and make unlimited wishes or even three for that matter. Like I worship and follow God because he gave me Jesus Christ to die for my sins to then be raised, and he saved me from an eternity without him. That's why I follow Christ, not to have, again, another scripture that's misquoted often, life more abundantly. Life more abundantly does not mean that you're just going to have material riches on this earth. Is it possible? Yes. But life more abundantly means that you're going to have the fruits of the Spirit, which are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. I think I may have miscounted. But either way, you're going to have the fruits of the Spirit when you are connected to God and when you have the Holy Spirit living, being active through your daily life. Like, that is what life more abundantly means. But when you're agreeing to put your life in God's hands, you're agreeing to submit to His will for your life and what He wants for you. And what He wants for you, honestly, is for you to be more like Him. And so what does He do? He puts you in situations to make you more like Him. And they might just be situations that are hard. The Bible talks about the fact that we're going to have hard seasons in life and those seasons are to refine us so that we can become more like him. We don't go through hard situations in this life for nothing. God will always use them to either A, refine us or to learn something to help somebody else. So again, I'm not trying to discourage you when I say that it's not promised that we will be married. I'm just trying to warn you against putting your hope in a man aka a future spouse because your hope it can't be sustained in a spouse marriage is hard and that's because you have two imperfect people coming together trying to be one and on top of that even if marriage were perfect nothing 
And I mean, nothing can satisfy you the way Jesus Christ can. Nothing can satisfy that void that you feel, which let's be honest, that's the thing that you're trying to fill by putting a spouse or putting all the luxury soft light things in. Like that's the thing that you're trying to cover up. Nothing can feel that except for Jesus Christ. Which leads me to my point about the soft life being purely about luxury, high status, and whatever. It, it's all worldly. It doesn't have any grounds. It's not going to hold up when the tests of life actually come. Like if you or a loved one gets sick, all the money in the world cannot save that person. But God can. Something this season has been teaching me is that the soft life is not just luxury expensive things, fancy things, high status, etc. The soft life in reality is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. The soft life is being connected to Jesus, the source, the one person that can actually fulfill all of our needs. The soft life is seeing your prayers get answered. The soft life is knowing and trusting in a God that can do all things when everything around me seems like it's crumbling and it's failing and it's just no hope. And then God comes and steps in and he's like, look at what I can do now. Again, not in a prosperity way. He's like, look at who I am. Look what I can do. <laughs> the soft life is praying for your sister for five plus, maybe 10 years. And then she finally sends you a text telling you that she's given her life to Christ. What? That's the soft life, and I'm not going to cry. Shoot, I'm already crying. Ah. The soft life is knowing that God is with you, even, even when life is hard, when your husband has cheated on you, <laughs> and, and everything seems like it's gone to crap, and still knowing God is with me. I feel your peace and having joy in the midst of terrible times. That's the soft life. And so I just want to ask you, is Christ enough? Because he's enough for me. If he never brings you a husband, is he enough? If he doesn't bring you a husband that makes more than six figures, is he enough? If the worst thing imaginable happens, is he enough? If you never get that soft life that the internet talks about, is he enough? Because he's enough for me. I'll take Jesus over anything, any day. God is just so good. Okay, I'm going to go cry now. Um, I've actually got to go, but thanks for watching this video. It's been great. It's been good. And I mean, I say all of this with love also and no condemnation and no judgment. Like, if you are in that season right now where you are seriously wanting these things and you might be like, well, do do I want this more than God? If, if you're struggling with that, it's okay. We've all been there. Like I said, like I recently just realized that I was putting all my hope and trust into men and that's not what I'm supposed to be doing. And so it's not the end of the world. God's still here for you. He still loves you. There's, there's hope. Like just turn to Jesus, give him your sorrows. If you are struggling financially, tell God you need him to provide for you. If you're tired of your nine to five job and you want to quit, tell God to provide you either with patience with your current job or with a job that you can actually enjoy. Whatever the thing is that's bothering you right now in life, like just give it to God. His burden is easy and light. Just give it to God. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe, like, do all the fun things. I'm gonna go cry. Have a great day. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.